this Sunday, is it possible Donald Trump has finally gone too far? You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. The conservative backlash is fierce. And joining me this morning to provide insight and analysis are David Brooks of the New York Times, Heather McGee of Demos, NBC's Andrea Mitchell, and radio talk show host Hugh Hewitt. Welcome to Sunday. It's Meet the Press. From NBC News in Washington, this is Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. Good morning. When Donald Trump became a birther, and insulted African Americans, a lot of people at the time said, that's it for Trump. Well, it wasn't. When he insulted Hispanics, a lot of people said, that's it for Trump. It wasn't. When he insulted John McCain, a lot of Republicans started to say, that's it for Trump. And it wasn't. Now the latest, that's it for Trump moment, insulting Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly. Friday night, still smarting from tough and pointed questioning, from all the debate moderators on Thursday, Trump said this of Kelly. She starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Uh, Donald stepped on a lot of important stories. The New York Times today has a story on Hillary Clinton's server. Only Scott Walker brought up Hillary Clinton's server. So I thought what he did was uh, uh, to build the audience. It was enormous. At the same time, I wanted a different issue set talked about, and so the Republican primary voter lost in that. Carly Fiorina won big right. time. Yeah. Walker, Kasich, Rubio, but the loser was the GOP. The, uh, what can damage Donald Trump, though, Andrew? I mean, you know, we, we conventional political gravity doesn't right. apply to him or at he, least hasn't he's got teflon and if not this what i mean gender what could be more important 53 percent of the voters right. you drill down on what women care about what women want it's insulting it's rude he attacks a very popular the most popular star on cable tv among and conservatives love her and, i mean and, this is where this, this is why some people think this is the straw it's like he's insulting somebody that conservatives have really fallen fallen for uh, on, on, on their favorite the circus channel. goes on and as hugh says the real issue but I'm not persuaded at all that Donald Trump on the issue of jobs and the economy is what you're really going to hear because look at the way he describes the bankruptcy right. law. Look at the way he talks about jobs. No one has really been able to seriously sit down and interview him about right. what he knows and what he does. David, what, what you just heard, I mean, he, he doesn't, he seems to have an allergy to apologizing. You know, it, 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 is, I, I, you know, I think we all think we know what type of, I, I, you know, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to apply to voters aren't here. Yeah, actually, just listening to that interview, it struck me I'm listening to a religious zealot, and the God he worships is Donald Trump, and anybody who is against the God is a blasphemer who has to be cast out of the Inquisition. Right. And so what I think he's done with each of these things is create a fortress around himself, and 20% of the Republican, at least polled voters, mm -hmm. are inside the fortress, and they're going to be in that, that fortress. The walls get higher with each controversy. They're going to stay there. But 80% are never going to go in the fortress. And so I think he'll be in the race at 20%. He'll never get anybody else, but he'll be there with that position. What, should the, what should the other candidates do? What well, do you think? What well, do you, I are, think are, that are you hearing from Jeb? Did you think what Jeb Bush did yesterday? You think, you know what? You may not support Jeb Bush, but right. that's what he should do. Well, I think it's important to remember that a Republican presidential nominee hasn't won women since 1988. So this is a very deep problem with the party. It's not going to be enough for anyone, a commentator or one of the candidates, to just uh, disavow Trump's sort of interpersonal sexist comments. Because what we know about a bias against women or, or anyone else is that it operates at a bunch of different levels. Right. And you've got the interpersonal stuff, which is sort of easy to bad away. It makes for good commentary. But, you know, the right has a problem with institutional bias against women. You look at their vision of a health care system that excludes reproductive care, structural bias against women, looking at the economy they want, where, you know, low wage, page work, low wage, excuse me, low wage workers, um, who the majority of whom are women, are staying in poverty. There's a deeper, deeper problem here than just these offhand comments. And where does the race stand next? Meet the Press is brought to you by Morgan Stanley, where capital creates change. In the summer of 2016, for the first time ever, the spirit of the Olympic Games comes to life in one of the world's most dazzling cities. The 2016 Olympic Games from Rio on NBC. Nerd Screen time, and we're going to look at Thursday's debates. Because guess what? You may be surprised at who Republican voters thought won. 
According to our scientifically weighted survey among some randomly selected respondents online through our partnership with SurveyMonkey, 22% of Republican voters thought Carly Fiorina won the debate because of her standout performance in the so-called happy hour debate, not somebody who was on the main stage. Meanwhile, Donald Trump came in second. Rubio, Cruz, Carson, and Huckabee rounded out the top six. At the bottom of the Who Won list, by the way, Paul, Walker, Bush, Christie, and Kasich. Now, we also asked, who lost the debate? Well, guess what? While Trump was second on who won, he was number one on this list of who lost, followed not so far behind there, Rand Paul, Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, and Lindsey Graham, the top five on the who lost. So, where does the race stand right now? Donald Trump sticking right there with his one in five support, nearly one in four now of Republican voters, 23%. But the shakeup post debate, Cruz in second at 13, Carson at 11, Fiorina, her highest national poll showing of any survey I've seen, 8%. Marco Rubio tied with her at 8%. In the back of the pack, by the way, you'll see some former front runners, Bush and Walker. Then you have Paul, Huckabee, Kasich, and Perry rounding out the top 12. Panelists here. Uh, Hugh Hewitt, is there a disconnect between how the mainstream media folks have uh, looked at John Kasich and our little polling, which showed no bump for John Kasich? What's, are, uh, are we having a disconnect? I have great affection for the governor of my home state. He has a Reagan-esque temperament. First question you asked me was about temperament. Kasich, Walker, Rubio, Jeb Bush, even Ted Cruz, they have nice temperaments within our party, mm -hmm. and they will play very well. I, uh, I think he will have to up his combativeness with Hillary, as does Jeb Bush. They both have combativeness deficits when it comes to going after Hillary. And I want them to go after the New York Times piece this morning. She destroyed wow. 31,000 emails. They should be talking about that every single day. Heather McGee, president of Demos Action. Are you fearful of John Kasich as the Republican nominee? Uh, versus Hillary Clinton? So, no, but I do think that um, his brand of sort of compassionate conservatism, expanding Medicaid, talking about the mental health crisis in our prisons, gets him in the door with a lot of where Americans are right now, which is really anxious about economic inequality. Half of Americans today couldn't pay a $400 bill without going into debt or selling something. So the Republican Party spent a few minutes on the economy in the debate and had very little to say for working class Americans well, other that, than more tax cuts. That goes to the, the organizers a little bit, which was Hugh's point about, about questions. Go ahead very quickly. I, I think that Hillary Clinton in some ways because the email controversy was not really explored very adequately right. by the by the questioners, and also because of this focus on gender, is one of the beneficiaries of what happened. Uh, and, and she should have been. I could argue and that with Marco Rubio and John Kasich seen as two strong performers in a general election, that's scary to Hillary. Clinton. But you know, Those I'm going to be in New Hampshire with her tomorrow, and mm -hmm. you know, I'd be very surprised if at a town hall meeting this does not come up, and she has a perfect opportunity right. to talk about Megyn Kelly. David. General election messages, which really is what John Kasich had. Yeah, he's, on that he's debate, got which is why there was this universal in the intelligentsia going, oh, hey, that's pretty impressive. But he's got a, Republican he's got primary a, voters didn't hear that. He's got a growth agenda, he's got a heart agenda. Every time he deviates to the center, he does it in the context of faith, mm -hmm. feeling to religious voters, so that's smart. To me, when all the dust settles, you just go with who has the best political skills. You look at all these guys who or and, and Carly, who has the best political skills? Right now that's Marco Rubio. He's the most talented politician in the field right now. I think we saw it in your interview. You asked him some tough questions. He handled them well. Maybe he's too polished. Maybe he's too young. But you got to think the upside there is higher than anybody else. And one thing that was really apparent in Jeb Bush's reaction at Red State last night, he said, this is going to lose us the election. He didn't say that it was wrong. He didn't criticize yeah. Donald Trump on the merits right. uh, or defense of what he said. I, I also agree that Marco Rubio is the best politi politically skilled actor in the stage, uh, whether or not He's the best general election candidate. I don't know. I think I really think that Kasich showed some chops, and that well, we'll it see. may not be with this kind of Kasich Rubio or Rubio Kasich. Uh, keep them all in there. <laughs> don't forget Scott Walker because he is doing very well with the base. Uh, we are. Uh, we'll get back to you in a second. Take a look at an enormous crowd. You're invited to the Today Plaza. Go to our website, RSVP, and we'll make sure your visit is unforgettable. The crowd goes wild today. Experience the plaza today. End game time. Panel is here. So much to get to. Let's uh, end with where we started. Donald Trump. How does it end? David? 
How does it end? He's the dark id of the American mind. Uh, and there's something compelling in watching a guy who's unashamed and unembarrassed. So I think he'll just go on and get ratings. He will not be the nominee. He's not a political candidate. He's a presence in our deep unconscious that we can't get rid of. <laughs> an id. <laughs> That's right. By that? It's well, an interesting I, analysis, but I don't know if I disagree. I think he's also going to run into the Romney problem. When he was talking about the way he took advantage of the laws of and bragging about it mm -hmm. at a time when actually, you know, Americans are being crushed by debt and can't use the bankruptcy laws on their own mortgages or student loans the way corporations can. It was so tin-eared, and I just think he's going to keep coming across that way because he's a billionaire at a time of rampant economic inequality. But yeah. let's go back to what... Why, why are people gravitating to him? Well, I was surprised, that, in fact, that the bankruptcy issue didn't come up more in the after effects. I thought it was so exactly right. Uh, I think as an independent candidate, perhaps, I know how hard that is, but he's got the money and he's got a lot the celebrity, but I don't see him as the Republican nominee. Well, I think the narcissism of Donald Trump is so extraordinary that it is like watching a train wreck, mm -hmm. uh, but I just cannot see the Republican Party choosing him as the nominee and him being back on that stage next summer. Is it become, does the next week define, do, do we see a moment, what's the, does he have an exit ramp? I mean, I think The Apprentice used to be his exit ramp. <laughs> He's got no, I don't, I'm trying to figure out what the exit ramp is. Does he just get fed up with all this? I don't think no. so. I think what you, what one of the candidates got to do is they got to talk about America. There's a lot of I talk, even John Kasich's interview today, there was a lot of I, a lot of me. And there has to be a uni uniting the party and uniting the country. If you go to the Republican events, there's an intense hunger for patriotism because of the fear of national decline. And if you can tap into that, that's a passion that will defeat the compelling anti-passion that Donald Trump has surrounding him. Well, it is just, it is one of these things, it's, it's fun and frustrating to follow at the same time. Is that wrong? No, that's right. Scott Walker tapped into what David just talked about when he talked about Poland, when he talked about NATO, when he talked about the need to uh, get more troops on the front line with Russia. He's up, and, and Rubio does it too, and that's where the party needs to stay. And I don't know that uh, Donald Trump can go there. He doesn't have that background. He doesn't have that factual ability that the others bring to the table. What do you uh, make of Carly Fiorina, Heather? Uh, I think she was the standout in the first debate, and I, think she she, to be? and I think she deserved to be. I think she had great debating skills and a lot of confidence, but do I think she's right on policy? Do I think she's going to be able to really change what is the big Achilles heel for the right, which is their but economic vision? Is it easier vision? for her to attack no. Hillary Clinton than the men? Of course. Oh, sure. All right. I will leave it there. That's all for today. We'll be back next week. Gosh, who knows what will happen in the next seven days. But if it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.